In video number two of this sort of impromptu series on uh, production costs, what we showed was the increasing marginal costs which caused the variable cost function to not only slope upward but to curve upward. This means that the marginal cost is rising. See how the marginal cost of additional units of output are rising? Can you make any sense out of that? I hope so, because I can't. Anyway, if you were to check out um, chapter 7, particularly uh, uh, figure 7.3, you'll find the production function uh, doesn't flatten out immediately to start sloping upward, curving upward. Which means that uh, in the beginning of a production process, it may not be the case that marginal returns will start diminishing immediately. As a matter of fact, in the very beginning, marginal returns might start increasing. And this is probably due to the benefits of specialization. As you add more workers to a production process, you can get the benefits of specialization, which will increase the marginal product of the additional workers. However, eventually, as you start to add more workers, re marginal returns will begin to diminish. And as you know from the last uh, video, diminishing marginal returns will cause marginal costs to increase. However, by the same token, increasing marginal returns, which you might see at the beginning of the production process as the firm is adding more units of an input, marginal uh, uh, product may actually increase. This means that uh, resources are becoming more productive for a brief period of time and when that happens marginal costs are going to diminish. Now just as this upward curving mar uh, variable cost function in indicated rising marginal costs, as you might imagine a flattening variable cost function would indicate diminishing mar marginal costs. Let me show you what that, what that looks like. Quantity, dollar sign. Here is variable cost, and notice that the variable cost function there is flattening out. Variable cost. This is a variable cost function, too. Notice in both cases, they are positively sloped. And that is, of course, because as you produce more of something, the variable costs are going to rise. Here, it is rising at an increasing rate. Here, as you can see, the variable cost function is rising at a decreasing rate. Let's see what that does to marginal costs. Here's the first unit of output right there. Here's the marginal cost of the first unit of output. Here's the second unit of output. There is the marginal cost of the second unit of output. And here's the third unit of output. There is the marginal cost of the second of the third unit of output. So you can see that in this case right here the flattening variable cost function is co is indicating that marginal costs are diminishing. So we start a production process, we add a worker. He can produce so much. We add another worker. Between the two of them, they produce more than twice as much. This is the synergy that results from increasing marginal product, probably caused by specialization or something else. We add a third guy, uh, marginal product may go up even more. I don't know how long will this last, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever. Eventually, however, 
as we get people packed in the factory, marginal returns are going to diminish. Now, as marginal returns are increasing, the marginal cost of producing a unit of output, uh, producing output is going to diminish. That means the variable cost function is going to rise at a fl flattening rate. However, as diminishing marginal returns set in and resources become less productive, marginal return, marginal costs rather, will start rising at an increasing rate. The result is going to look like this over here. The result is going to look like this. Let me draw a big graph here so it's real easy to see. Quantity dollar sign. In the beginning, the variable cost function will begin rising at a decreasing rate. Notice how it's still positively sloping. At some point, however, it'll start rising at an increasing rate. Here, we see that marginal costs are falling. Here, marginal costs are rising. Now, this is the variable cost function. Fixed costs are still going to be horizontal. Fixed costs are still going to look like this. The total co cost, of course, is going to be vertically parallel to the variable cost function, as I explained in the first video. So we just, at every unit of output, add this distance to the variable cost function right there, and we're going to get a total cost function that's going to look like this. So there is the relationship between fixed costs, variable costs, and total costs. Interestingly enough, however, these are not precisely the curves that we are going to use in our analysis. Instead of using total costs, variable costs, and fixed costs, we're going to use average total costs, average variable costs, average fixed costs, and oh yes, one more, as you may have guessed, marginal cost. So let's do a little video right now on what the marginal cost curve will look like. Stay tuned.